Hello and thank you for joining us. You're listening to a We Do Talk with David Jakes. Hi and welcome back to another We Do Talk. Anyone that's been following this channel will know that we've talked quite a lot recently to a number of guests about general health and well-being and we talked about physical health, talked quite a lot about mental health which is something that is very important to me. But one subject we've never really touched on is that of financial health and I think there's a good argument to say that if you have financial health and financial well-being in your life, that goes a long way to good mental well-being. So I have a great guest joining me today. Uh, delighted to welcome Nina Fernandez, who is joining us from New Jersey. Nina, good afternoon. Welcome to We Do. Thanks so much for being here. I'm incredibly honored and psyched. Thank you so much for having me on this platform. You are an entrepreneur you're an actor, and you're also the founder of a nonprofit organization called Seed and Legacy, whose mission is to provide financial literacy to underserved communities. That sounds like a wonderful mission. I'd love to talk to you a lot more about what you're doing and how that came about and what your vision is. But maybe we could start off and you could give us a little bit of background on yourself, uh, where you grew up, some of your childhood experiences that shaped you as an adult and why you care about people being financially illiterate. So I am Nina Fernandez. As you said, I'm an actor, entrepreneur, and real estate syndicator. And I am the president and founder of Seed and Legacy, as well as the Fernandez Syndicate. I have a cat named Samuel L. Jackson and two amazing, amazing nephews. Um, I am a proud Black and Cuban woman. And ultimately, I want to be able to change the perception of the Black image in mainstream media. Um, I believe that I can affect that change by teaching melanated and historically disenfranchised peoples um, financial literacy and entrepreneurship. Um, one day, I hope to open schools that will be focused on arts and finance, sort of like a, an academy for the troubled everywhere from Harlem to Southeast DC to South Carolina to Senegal, West Africa, uh, Havana, Cuba, just wherever our future may be falling behind. Um, and I just want to leave this planet better than I found it. Um, and, and that's who I am. And I think that the one thing that puts uh, all of us in the same category, whether it be race, color, creed, gender, religion, nationality, none of that stuff really matters um, more than the fact that we are part of the human race. And right now, with the way that things are, um, we all need to know about money because that's how we get what we need as humans. We get shelter through money. We get food through money. Um, even if you own a farm, you own that property. So that's pretty much where I am in a nutshell uh, with what I believe my life's purpose is and where my passions lie. Yeah, that's, that's an awesome mission, Nina. I really admire you for doing that and, and wanting to make the world a better place. And, you know, so many entrepreneurs, I live here in Silicon Valley, and for many entrepreneurs, it's all about making money. It's all about making a lot of money for myself and then maybe reinvesting that and making more later on. But not everybody does something that really changes the way people do things. Uh, you know, I was one of the early employees at PayPal, which was a new financial product that helped a lot of financial freedom by making payments easier. I'm very proud to have been a part of that. Um, also proud in, in my past to have worked with Reid Hoffman, who founded LinkedIn, that changed the way that people network with each other. And these are the things I feel are really important. And by the way, that's really the mission of We Do, is to be able to do good things for good people. And you know what you say really, really resonates a lot with me because the education system, uh, I think globally, but particularly the education system in the United States, doesn't even go anywhere close to teaching people about finance. I mean, even the basics of opening a checking account, the difference between a debit card and a credit card, interest rates, mortgage rates, paying rent, how, how do you budget for that type of thing? There's no classes for that. You know, we put people out into the world, young people go through university, they come out with student debt, and then they have to go and fend for themselves. So there must be a better way to, to prepare. And I think that actually also represents uh, something that you did. You had to take out a significant amount of student loans to get your way through NYU, is that right? That is absolutely correct. Uh, to this day, including interest, um, a quarter of a million dollars roughly. Wow, 
That is, that, that's it's shocking that, firstly, that a good education co should cost that much. And secondly, that, uh, you know, you had to go out and procure those resources to be able to do that. But more power to you and congratulations for doing that. I know you'll pay off that debt and I know that you'll, you'll turn that into that education into a lot of success. So after, after graduation, um, I believe you then worked in the, the film industry in New York for a while. Is that right? Yes, I am still a part of the film industry in New York. And most recently, uh, April, I believe of this year, April of this year, I flew out to L.A. for three weeks to work as an onset acting coach, uh, first assistant director and associate producer and, and a player, a bit part um, on uh, a television series that uh, is, you know, it's just. L.A. is completely different from New York, but wherever you land, if you're a theater kid or film kid, my heart was just jumping up and down, you know, and, and it really reminded me that the last um, seven or some odd years in New York has really just been um, an exercise in establishing and, and changing um, my, my mindset uh, and exercise in mental health. If I could go back to the very beginning as I, I'm, I'm from New York, but I, I moved around a, a lot. I had a, a, a very loving set of parents, the most generous people, um, <laughs> love to laugh, but not without our struggles. And, and a lot of those experiences helped shape me most as an adult. I, I my first memories were in front of TV. You know, I, I loved movies more than anything. My idols, Jim Carrey and Robin Williams, <laughs> kept my imagination malleable and limitless. And I remember around the age of five, my mother telling me the story where I was gathering all of my teddy bears on the couch and bringing her into the living room and replaying live for her the last scene of Scarface where Tony has the gun and all the curse words. And then my parents were like, that's when they knew they were going to have kind of a different kid. So <laughs> I knew I always wanted to be an actor at an early age, but I had some, uh, I had some domestic dysfunction in my home. And I was always curious and I'd like to be right. And I was highly competitive. So I just excelled at school uh, so I could get away from my circumstances. Um, I think that this is where the, the first um, beginnings of, of, a, of a disconnect for, for mental health um, compounded by a lack of knowledge and financial literacy or financial health compounds and adds on top of dumps on people really psychologically and emotionally and, yeah. and their living circumstances. So physically they're just manifestations of all of these emotions that are going on inside and, and, and you're, and you're a child. And then your parents yeah. were, are just people just doing the best that they can. And then their parents are just doing the best that they can, you know, I'm first generation Cuban. So, um, you know, it, it just, it ends up being this, this years, centuries, you know, eons long battle. Um, and we don't even know that we're, that we're at war. So, um, yeah, yeah. long story short, I just going to land the plane here. My sister decided that in DC, by the time that I'd landed there, uh, that I should audition for Duke Ellington school of the arts. And I said, yeah, sure. Why not? And I learned a monologue and then I got there and I was just so freaking nervous and I forgot all the words. I forgot every single line I was supposed to say, but I still got in. And then I was, you know, drawing on my experiences at home. Um, I got accepted anyway, to, to say the least. And I, I was surrounded by people who are now big names in uh, Oscar winning movies and commercials everywhere. I was also featured in Time Magazine and on ABC News. And I wrote an article that was based on a national competition that I had won. It was featured in the Washington Post, all of this before the age of 17. But I hadn't learned by then what I needed to know, which were some of the basics, you know, <laughs> human beings need to be armed when they become adults in America. Just like you mentioned, filling out tax forms, saving and investing early. What the heck is a credit score? Why is it important? How do I use it? But instead, when I got to college, when I got to NYU, I had to work 40 hours a week. I had to go to school full time. So basically a nine to five, I had to rehearse, I had to perform in shows. <laughs> and then I graduated early. You know, so mm -hmm. I took out this small business loan and had all of these accolades and all of this energy and society pumps it into kids. You know, you can do whatever, you know, shoot for the moon, go to whatever school you want to go to. And then I racked up this crippling debt. And the reality is the day I was 18 and a, a day, I, I was probably not going to be able to take out loans for a business or loans for my first home, loans for a car, loans, loans for certain types of jobs. 
And if someone in your family doesn't know all of this stuff and you don't have the money to go to a wealth advisor who, you know, only really works with clients of certain uh, net worth anyway, you know, my livelihood is in serious trouble. And I had to make all of those adult decisions the day I turned 18, pretty much. And I can't go back and, and make a better life for myself. But at this point, I can I can only hope to be a positive influence for others. There are some great and talented actors who end up bartending for money. It's extremely risky business trusting a no name kid like myself to be on set all day and to be incredibly talented and to be marketable and write for the part and so many variables. So all of these things kind of made everything slow down. You know, what was this rocket ship when I was in high school fizzled out, you know, and then like quick, like quicker than I could ever imagine. So I would write screenplays, write parts for myself in screenplays, audition where I can work 80 hours a week behind the bar. So, you know, I've done little bit parts here and there, but still trying Mm -hmm. to have a life, you know, you can get completely lost and swallowed up in all of the things and we lose ourselves. And remember, you know, 21, 22, 23, you're not exactly at the pinnacle of knowing who you are, but this is what I was doing. So I became very depressed um, and isolated myself and, and people in my family, I saw use a lot of drugs and alcohol to self soothe. And there was a tremendous dark cloud underneath the big smile. And that's difficult to explain mm-hmm. to some people. Nonetheless, I, I worked and I worked and I loved bartending and I love the speakeasy culture and the distillery and winemaking and, you know, love being in the thick of it during hell hour or, you know, as most people call it, you know, happy hour. <laughs> this was the better part of seven years of my life. And yeah. Yeah. Um, it just, it became this thing where people, myself, people who loved me, pe- people who were, you know, my fam- pe- strangers after talking to me for 20 minutes are just like, what the heck are you doing behind a bar? Why aren't you in front of a camera? I think that what you say resonates with pretty much any industry. It's like in business, you know, there's only one Bill Gates, there's only one Steve Jobs, there's only one Jeff Bezos, but there's millions of people that don't make it to the, the very top. And the same in, in show business, you know, there's a, those few people who are the well-known names that have been out there for years. There's millions of very talented people and, you know, they're still trying to make it. But um, just needed to touch back on something you said earlier on about really the power of education and how I, I think that education can be so empowering to the individual. You know, you used it to get out of a situation, you know, a home situation you wanted to get out and make a life for yourself. You made it happen. It came at a huge cost. Similarly, I think with financial education is that once again, you know, we can educate people to be able to manage their finances, plan for their finances much better. So uh, so this is something that's very important to me, having had a, a background in finances in my career. And I also interviewed several months ago now, a good friend of mine, Luke Holman, who has started a company called First Route. And his mission is to create financial literacy and what he calls participatory budgeting in schools, where the kids, in, the students, have a say in how the money gets spent which I think is a a, a very powerful thing. But let's talk a little about Seed and Legacy. So when did you first have the vision to start this organization and and what brought it about? And and just tell me a little bit about Seed and Legacy and what it is and where it is today. Like I said, I was behind the bar and I noticed that I was out of place. And uh, the kinds of people that I kept meeting there were millionaires. They would talk to me Mm. about how to make money, how they made money, how to make their money make money. So it was one of those things where I was like, okay, I need to really take advantage of this and and listen to what they have to say and and grab up all of those gems. Decided to take a course. A friend of mine uh, contacted me and was like, what's what's holding you back from doing what you want to do? And I was like, money, financial literacy, money, education, money. Why can't, you know, what am I doing as an aunt if I don't give to my nephews what I didn't get, if I don't give to my future children what I didn't get and make it a little bit easier for um, for them, you know, just being born in the wrong body in a capitalist society, being a, a product of circumstances, um, it's a terrifying thing. Um, mm-hmm. But we can change that, like just knowing the the not knowing, no, not knowing what you don't know. Um, teaching compound interest and cryptocurrency to a classroom full of kids, you know, isn't going to make everybody magically jump up and become millionaires overnight. That's not what I wanted to set out to do. I just wanted for 
I just needed people to know that to be exposed to it didn't have to mean you already have to have skin in the game. You didn't already have to have money. You did not already have to have an accountant or a wealth advisor in your family. You could just break the cycle yourself. Um, I contend that financial literacy is the social, scientific, psychological, mathematical, and behavioral study of human emotion. Mm. We need to yeah. study that just as much as we're studying history and geography and science. And <laughs> like, we, we need to know how to operate. Um, so I took the course, I got hooked completely on what the power of digital assets could do in terms of passive income. You make this thing, you pour value into it and you make sure that it helps people. And then it, it's alive. You know, you don't you don't have to wait on it. It it doesn't need to eat or sleep. It keeps going. That's kind of like what money does. So a light bulb just clicked, you know, a few months ago. It was just like, all right, hey, I'm going to create this set of digital products for budding entrepreneurs. I'm going to see if I can help in any way, coach, consult uh, with people who are just like me, who are a little bit lost on their passions or a little bit behind or can't seem to put one foot in front of the other, but there has to be a healthy foundation of financial literacy. And then this is where things kind of get muddy because I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing that I say is tax advice, legal advice, financial advice. I I don't have the credentials to do that. I'm not a fiduciary. Um, But that doesn't mean that the information just needs to be whispered. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean Mm. that the information just needs to be uh, kept in a members only club. You know, it, it really does deserve to be put in front of eyes of the young as soon as possible. Exactly what First Root is is talking about, uh, your friend Luke, I'm in there. So the main mission of Seed and Legacy ended up being twofold in that regard, right? You got the financial literacy portion, then you got the entrepreneurship portion. So the nonprofit, um, federally mandated curriculum, real estate, compound interest, crypto, credit score, all of the things we mentioned. What does interest rate mean for my savings account? What does interest rate mean on a loan? Is it the same thing? All that stuff needs to be quelled. You know, all that stuff needs to be, that's human stuff that we, that we deal with every yeah. single day. So that's that mission. Um, I also, one of my biggest heroes, one of my mentors in life uh, is an ex-con. He, um, made some mistakes in life when he was younger and um, then he got out and then he went and got his associate's degree. And then he went and got his bachelor's degree and then he went and got his master's and then he went and took courses and, and then he opened up a barber shop, and now he's considering running for city council. He's a homeowner. You know, he didn't let his circumstance be the end all be all, but the amount that he had to work now, his idea is, okay, what do I do to pass on this, 50 some odd years of knowledge onto my sons so that they don't have to create that same cycle. What, what do we do? The for-profit venture or the, um, the other segment of Seed and Legacy was born, which was there are already some entrepreneurs who are making enough money and now they just need to know what to do with it. You know, you don't necessarily need to invest in crypto now that you have a set of barbershops. That's not what that is. What it is mostly is, you know, I had to learn the hard way how to learn these skills and to teach myself. But I'm happy to put my two sons in a five week course about entrepreneurship while they're 15, 16 or, you know, 19 or, you know, after school, wh- whatever it is. I want them to just hear the words. And, I, you know, I'm busy running a business, so I might not have time to do it. Right. So now what I've decided is to compound um, to compound both of these ideas that there needs to be a foundation of how money works, the power of it, how does it serve you when you're no longer here, um, and how to use that to scale your business to where you don't even have to be there. Multiple passive streams of income mm. are absolutely possible through digital products. So whether you have a franchise or you know products-based business or service-based business, um, we are now in this post-pandemic society where everything is online. It, it just, it, there has, there is a way to get people like myself, nine to fivers, um, to get back to their passions and reconnect to who they are and kind of just learn the basics and, and take off running and see where that goes. So again, the mission is twofold, the non-for-profit, uh, version. I'm going to 
I'd hope to one day be able to have a curriculum that is fully free and comprehensive on the true power of money. And then I want that to also be uh, implemented in the prison system for nonviolent returning citizens, because taking people who have made a mistake and deserve a second chance um, and putting them back into the environment that is not fulfilling them. It is not serving them and, or, or helping them grow or learn anything in any way. It's just like uh, if, if you take a, a classroom full of kids and you put math on the board and say, all right, guys, there's the information, figure it out. And the teacher goes home. It's like, yeah, the resources are here. There's textbooks everywhere. But what the heck am I supposed to do? with all this information. So that's kind of the same thing that I wanted for uh, kids in school and uh, again, nonviolent returning citizens because everyone deserves a second chance. We're all human, myself included. I've had my own, you know, I'm not perfect. So I want every, I want this to be the opportunity where, you know, my past is completely open. You know, I've had stints with the law and I've had issues with drugs and alcohol and mental health and depression. And, um, you know, that's, it's a really difficult uh, thing to talk about or have people see the face of something that that is so noble or or so good in intention, but, you know, be marred by a few mistakes. So that's really where the planting of seeds to grow into a legacy, you get to change your stars, you get to change your circumstance from just being a human being to to leaving behind something that can um, change people for, for the rest of for the rest of time. That's um, yeah, that's yeah. kind of where that's from. Yeah. Nina, that's a wonderful story, and thank you for sharing your challenges in your life because you know, we've all had them, and different people have different challenges in different ways. And uh, I think it's very important to, to to talk about that and to talk about look, you know, this happened in my past, and I recovered from it. I was able to get my life back on track again, and uh, and that is very empowering. And I think that. There is something also very empowering and at looking at other people and thinking, you know, you're successful. I want to be like that person. What do I have to do to be like that person? It doesn't necessarily mean to, you know, to be their personality, but at least to have what they represent and, you know, their success in life, if that's something that you aspire to yourself. So the more stories that are out there, and believe me, everyone I talk to has a story. There's always a human story behind the business success or the business failure or whatever happens. And the more that people can learn from other people's trials and errors and not necessarily even failures. Uh, and I look at sometimes failure as an opportunity. That's one of the things I learned here in Silicon Valley is that if you fail at something, you learn from it, you gain that experience. Once again, that knowledge, it's education. At least I know how not to do something in the future, but I've also learned how other people do it better. I can learn how to do that the same way that they, they have. So again, it comes back to the more knowledge you have, the more education you have, the skills you have, then the more powerful you can be. And, and yeah, I think you've hit something very, very important there that if you don't have the basic skills of money management or as you become more successful the ability to to manage money more prudently and in fact i've seen companies fail because of poor cash management that's corporate cash management the same applies to the individual the same applies to the family so 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 thanks for for sharing all of that and that is an incredible vision and i know you're going to be successful with it <laughs> thank you so much david i appreciate that i hope so so, uh, so do you have anybody working with you on Seed and Legacy right now, or is this something that you pretty much have started on your own? Is this how how is that working out? At the moment, uh, this is a one woman show, and I have contacted um, a part of my digital uh, course that I'm launching, which is called Passive Creation Pays. Uh, a part of that program is how to get yourself out there, how to target market smartly. And what that literally just means is um, going on LinkedIn, finding three mentors, finding three people who are doing what it is that you're doing and figuring out what problems they're having, what solutions you can provide are figuring out where your target audience is. Are they on Instagram? Are they, you know, on TikTok? What products or services are you providing and where to find those people? And then, Comp and then compiling your your strategy. So in a nutshell, I contacted 
uh, LinkedIn. I stumbled upon Indiana Greg from We Do and just fell absolutely in love with what it is that you guys are doing over there. And your platform solves so many problems that budding entrepreneurs and creative entrepreneurs like myself are facing, which is, you know, the going to this platform and paying here and I have to have this subscription and all this thing and having all of these venues sort of working with you. It, you, you kind of put that all into one streamlined situation, which is fascinating. And just to take part in something like this lets me know that I'm on on the right path. So right now it's a one woman show and we're chugging along 16 hour days in front of the computer. <laughs> uh, but we're going to make something work. And I have a list of people whose problems I want to solve and I want to make myself um, available to them. And um that's that's pretty much where I am now as far as where my vision lies. I just got to take it one day at a time, one step at a time. I got to plan, pursue, persist, and then income repurpose. So as long as I can get those yeah. things yeah. Uh, together, I know that uh, some good things might come with seed and legacy one day. I, and I feel confident they will. And what I'm going to say now to anybody that's watching is if there's anyone out there that this really hits a chord and they feel that this is really important, I, I don't see how anyone could possibly say this is not an important subject and not something that shouldn't be supported. If anybody would like to help or anybody would like to contact you or get involved in Seed and Legacy, what's the best way to reach you? So I have a website www.seedandlegacy.com that is all spelled out so s-e-e-d-a-n-d-l-e-g-a-c-y seedandlegacy.com i'm also on instagram at seed and legacy linkedin company seed and legacy you can pretty much find me all over um you can email me seed and legacy at gmail.com um I am open for collaborations. I'm open for um, advice. I'm open for potential clients who are interested in the launch that's coming up of my digital course. Uh, again, nine to fivers who've lost their way and just need to reconnect to their passions, which is exactly what I've done uh, through this company. And um, anyone who is interested in a non for profit that is focusing on financial literacy for the bottom 10% of the public schools in this country, just, you know, please he don't hesitate to reach out. It's, it's very important. It's our future that we're talking about. Yeah, so yeah. we're going to plant the seeds yeah. today and uh, grow our legacy for, for, for the rest of time. Wonderful mission. And I wish you every success. And I look forward to watching its success and watching it evolve, because I think this is going to be a very exciting thing that that happens over the next few weeks, months and years and, and well into the future. So Nina, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Very empowering words. This is a, a wonderful mission that you're on. Um, I know that there's a lot of work that needs to be done and I would encourage anybody watching that can help in some way, contribute in some way, donate, whatever it is that you might like to do, please get in touch with Nina. And uh, once again, Nina, many thanks and wishing you a good rest of the day. Thank you. You as well, David. This is incredible. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, leave your comments below. And until next time, be well and take care. We upload a We Do Talk every week. So if you enjoyed this one, please subscribe and leave your comments below.